Hi everyone, how are you today? I am back of course with a brand new video here on SoCraftastic. Welcome back or welcome if you're new here. Last week I did some pretty cool stuff including a wood burning piece with Sharpie markers. So I made this really pretty rose. I also made this really cool party wall with colorful streamers and balloons. I did test a really cool product in that video. So I will link both of those below if you wanna watch them after this video. I actually have been working from my fiance's mom's house this week. Here at our house, we just had new hardwood flooring installed in place of the carpet in the living room and office. And then we had everything sanded, stained, and varnished to look exactly the same. So we're in the process of getting all of our furniture back in place again. I'm happy to finally be back home in the next couple of days, but I was able to come back and film in this room. Of course, the smell's gone down a lot. Just a quick life update for those of you who are interested. Uh, if you want to know more about what goes on behind the scenes in my day-to-day -day life, you can go follow me on Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram. I post a lot on my stories there. Here on YouTube though, I do post a brand new video every single Friday. So if you enjoy what you see, please ring that bell to turn notifications on so you never miss out. Now without further ado, let's get into my childhood colored pencil stash and make some cool artwork. For this drawing, I am using a piece of Bristol, which is a little bit thicker than cardstock. One of the sides is slightly textured. And instead of using the entire sheet, because I thought that might be a little bit large of a drawing, I decided to fold it in half and cut that. So I'm going to be working with a four and a half inch by six inch area instead of the nine by 12. I decided to try something that I haven't done in years. I don't think I've ever done this on YouTube. I am going to do a kind of self-portrait. I'm going to base it off of this photo of me. And in order to do that, I am zooming in and then screenshotting the picture while it's zoomed in, if that makes sense. This way it's not going to change while I'm measuring the dimensions and mapping out my facial features on the page. So I definitely recommend if you are using a photo, only like part of the photo I mean, to do something like this and screenshot it or like print it out if uh, that might be more helpful. This ruler is really fitting to the video as well because it is also very old like the colored pencils I'm going to be using. From the top of my head down to a little bit under my chin, um, just like the top part of my neck, is five centimeters on the phone screen. So I'm going to translate that onto the paper by making those inches instead. And then there is a little bit of room left to work with, but I just kind of extended that down to the neck. So yeah, it's not perfect by any means, but it's much better than I could have done just freehand or eyeballing it and like trying to do the proportions that way. I think the hardest part of this was getting that curve at the side of my face, like my cheek area to be the perfect roundness and not look too chubby, but not look too straight. That was definitely a challenge for me. Here are my childhood colored pencils. Peep that Chuck E. Cheese sticker. I actually have shown this in another video. If you guys know which one it is, well, let me know in the comments. The fact that they are all Crayola colored pencils should come at no surprise to those of you who have been around my channel for a long time because even as a child, I was very, very particular with the quality of my art utensils and, you know, coloring things. My favorite crayons and colored pencils and markers were always Crayola because they just had the most pigment. They worked the best for me. This is not an ad for Crayola. Uh, definitely, I'm not sponsored by them. Definitely would love to be at some point, but moving on. We have a wide array of colors, obviously, but also quality. We have this one here that looks like it barely survived the plague. These little itty bitty ones. A few that are missing the tips. A double-ended colored pencil that is now also missing a point, And a lot of extra points that did not throw away. Hmm. There are also a couple different styles of logo, so you can tell that the ones at the bottom are a lot older than the ones at the top. Especially you can tell because they have the website on them now. And actually, I don't even know if I have the most recent Crayolas. So I'll have to get a new pack and maybe do like a hundred colored pencils, one drawing type video with these. I had to lay them all out because aesthetic clips. And then 
Uh, these ones that are not so aesthetic, but they are all the earthy tones and I am kind of disappointed about this There's only one white not that it's very pigmented, but still why does Crayola not see the value in white now? Let's color her in well or me. I don't know, but I just very lightly put down the white areas which are going to be the most highlighted areas of uh, my face and after that you can see I'm taking the eraser which I should be using a kneaded one but I don't have that with me I think that that's still at my mom's house in my old room I could have gotten another one but I didn't think about it so I did lighten the pencil lines as much as I could just so those don't stick out and overpower any of the colored pencil I don't want it to look like there are outlines I want the colors and values like the shade and highlights to create the outlines first I'm going over most of the skin lightly with a peach colored pencil and I am trying to do the darkest areas first I do have this really bad habit I don't really know if it's a bad habit but I tend to take a very 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 long time on drawings and art pieces in general I feel like in class um, most people got done before me. I'm not exactly sure why this is. I'm not sure if it's maybe that I don't take the plunge right away and put down a dark value. Maybe I like build it up too slowly and I could skip some of those steps. But this is what I feel comfortable with, uh, especially since I don't practice this very often. So I'd like to get into it more and start getting better, honestly. For the outline of the eye and the eyebrow, I am not using black, I'm using a very dark brown, which is called dark brown. The eyebrow actually ended up a little bit too dark, so I did erase that a bit and then go in with brown and probably light brown to lighten that up. You can see I've been building up the tones of the face and trying to darken areas around the nose and the cheeks and the forehead and the chin, which I am actually going around with a light brown colored pencil to darken. Then I took, I think this is salmon, so it's a pinky orangish type color and I am putting in the blush. I do find that shading a face is pretty much like applying makeup. So any of you who have practice and knowledge applying blush, bronzer, highlight, you guys will probably already know where the dark tones of the face are and where the highlights should be. But having a reference image also makes this so much easier. Now I'm gonna start working on the hair and I am going to kind of do the rainbow. I'm not gonna to get to every single color on the hair, but I'm going to extend that out to the corner of the page, which you will see later. At first I did red and like light pink, and at this point I kind of thought that it looked like a bacon strip and I was not about that. I did not want bacon hair, so I will go back and fix this a little bit later, but for now I am moving on to the other colors and extending the red, like kind of doing a gradient from red to like a maroony fuchsia to a light purple and you know onward and out to blue and then like turquoisey uh turquoise turquoise turquoisiness i'm not quite to those colors yet obviously i'm still working on the purple here and i am kind of doing lines of white and light and then dark so there is some variation to the strands of hair and it just makes it look more textured and a little bit more realistic. This definitely isn't full on realism. It's more of like a semi stylized realism. And again, I am applying these colors very lightly at first. I'm not pressing down to their full potential. It's more so just to map out everything and putting down the pigments more lightly does allow for easier blending when you do finally figure out where all your colors should be and then you know you want to kind of make those mesh better so after that turquoise chunk i am doing a little bit more maroon so the white is kind of closed off more there's just too much white in those areas so now i'm moving over to the lips and i am doing an outline first and i'm trying to make the bottom lip lighter than the top one just because that's how it is in the photo that i have and I'm doing different shades of pink and magenta and red. To get my desired tone, I don't want it to match the hair, so I definitely want the lips to be more on the pink side. And then I am darkening under the chin and the neck area, and I'm applying more blush. See, this is what I mean. I keep trying to build up the tone on the face because it does seem really, really light, and I do have so many extremely light highlights on the face currently. Shading wise, I think that the nose was the most difficult for me because I couldn't get a seamless patch of the shading. 
um, it just kind of looked like a block of color. So yeah, that is a work in progress. And I did want to really bring the essence of me into this by keeping the hoop earrings from the photo. I wear hoop earrings so often, they're my favorite type of earring. And I don't know, they just like bring some flair to this. And I did put a little bit of silver after shading with a dark gray. And now you can see I'm moving back to the bacon hair and that just that little chunk and I'm putting shading in with brown. Obviously in the photo, my hair is not colorful. It's just brown. So, you know, there wasn't like a lot of definition in that photo. Um, so I'm just kind of making up where the shading would be in the hair. But definitely the hair that is closest to your neck and under your ear is going to have a little bit of shade. Not too much more to explain here. I am just going to work on blending the hair. While you watch me do that, I do wanna ask you guys a question. Those of you who are actually artists, even if you just are doing it for fun, you don't have to be a professional to be an artist. Keep that in mind. So you artists, what do you most enjoy coloring with? Which medium or painting? So do you prefer colored pencils, markers, crayons, oil pastels, chalk pastels, watercolor paints, acrylic paints, oil paints. That's a lot of options. And there's even more if you, you know, if I didn't mention something that you enjoy using the most. Let me know in the comment section below, you know, if you could only use one medium for the rest of your life, what would it be? I think that's a fun question, just what you enjoy most and why. I'm doing this little scalloped ruffly part and then I'm kind of moving on to do like mandala ele ele elephants, <laughs> elements. So just kind of pedally shapes and polka dots, zigzags and squiggles. Then I really honed in on the eye. I made it a lot darker and I think it's really funny. Um, well, not that I wear eyeliner. I, I like to wear dark black eyeliner. And what I think is funny is that I've gotten a couple comments saying that I'm like stuck in a certain year in the 2000s, like 2004 or something. And that like, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just so confused by that because since when was black eyeliner a thing of 2004? I think it is. But then again, maybe they're just trolling me because Jenna Marbles had a video where someone like had a comment to her had a comment to her. They commented and told her that she looked like she was like stuck in 2004 or 2008. So I don't know, I take it as a compliment. No comment is gonna get me to stop wearing eyeliner because I love it. I definitely did make it darker than I normally wear it. And I gave myself a wing here just uh, because I thought it would look nicer. Does it? I don't know, but I like it. In the photo, I couldn't tell at all what my actual eye looks like. There just isn't a lot of detail. Um, I didn't feel like actually looking at my eye in the mirror, so I did just look up reference images of brown eyes and then I put a white highlight with a Posca paint pen and I again tried to work on making the skin a little bit darker and more pigmented because I felt like there wasn't very much contrast there. Finally I did go and like kind of shade under my eye with a little bit of gray and I tried to fix the nose a little bit and define that. I will say that people talk down on cheap art supplies and Crayolas a lot. They think that these colored pencils are terrible, but honestly, aside from just being more difficult to blend, I think that they really help to strengthen the skill level of your art because if you're using something that is difficult to blend and you master it, just imagine how easy it's going to be when you are able to use more high-end art supplies. I don't know, that's just a tip for me because I spent so many years not being able to afford Prismacolor or anything like Copics or anything like that. Here it is and I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's one of the best faces that, probably the best face that I've ever made, which doesn't say a lot, but again, I don't really practice faces a lot. So I hope you like it. Give this video a thumbs up if you do, and uh, please come back next Friday to see another video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up to let me know, and be sure to come back next Friday. I do upload every single Friday. You can turn on bell notifications if you want to be reminded. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day, and thank you for watching. Bye!